Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for attending this evening. I'm, I'm going to take about 10 minutes of your time uh, as, we, as we conclude this evening's uh, presentations and, and basically give three or four points for the case for making a uh, diversified approach to your stock portfolios using the stocks and the sectors that are traded here on the Singapore Exchange. I think, um, a nice lead in by Richard talking about my gateway because I think if you wanted to exemplify what we're trying to do with my gateway, it's, it's very much what we've done tonight. It's a collaboration of, uh, of, of CRS, of the SGX Academy, as well as the resources of SGX to, to provide an informative venue for investors that uh, is perhaps less commercially driven than, uh, than the, uh, uh, some of the other sort of forces in the marketplace. And of course, this does rely on our, the support of our broker partners, of which CIMB are along here tonight as well. So, as we said, as I said, I wanted to make a case, three or four points for a diversified approach to investment. And I think the first and the most pertinent point is that investing is a journey in financial literacy. And it's a journey that you take, that you start, and you can restart on a, on a periodical basis. And I've got a, a few questions here, but I think where the real questions are that you need to ask yourself before you do take this journey or decide to reinvigorate your journey, the real questions you need to ask yourself, obviously, how much risk do you want to take? What are your investment objectives? Page 150 of this book that has just been released by uh, Mr. Gerald at CS. It has a list of 10 questions, which I think uh, are worth a photocopy out of the book after you've bought the book and, uh, and keeping a record of it because it, it, it puts it perfect in terms of uh, being informed about all the risks, the nature of the products and the markets themselves. And if you're aware of how tolerant and what your appetite will be to these certain products, then that's going to help you in your investment processes when you're coming to making the decisions that you need to do when you, whether you are going to be buying or selling a stock or a security at least you're going to be making that without the clouded judgment of the emotions that can sometimes be juggled into that, uh, in, uh, that decision-making process. So, what, why do we invest? Well, we are going to be investing. And we're going to be investing more in Singapore than, uh, than we have been recently. The report by the IMF that came out this, just this week, that it does... It, provides an annual report on the Singaporean economy. He does a lot of annual reports on a lot of economies. And one takeaway fact from this is in the numbers that the Singapore authorities have given the IMF, the private saving in Singapore is going to decrease from 34.4 per cent in 2012 to 32.6 per of GDP in 2017. But private investing is going to increase from 18.6% uh, up to 19.7%. So the forces of economic equilibrium are inferring that we will be investing more over the next five years or so. Why might we be doing that? Well, Mr. Gerald actually uh, pointed out when we had our MOU signing recently, the days of keeping all the money under the mattress are over, even figuratively. As, 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 as Eman mentioned, the, uh, what's the inflation rate? Maybe 4.5% at the moment max. Average normal expected inflation is above 3%. Bank accounts are providing you with a uh, savings rate, as we said, 0.25%. So there's a little bit of a gap there. It's up to invest. If you're wanting to invest, you're living in a very vibrant economy, perhaps the world's most vibrant economy, when you consider Singapore GDP is growing over the last 10 years up to the end of the June quarter at an average annualised rate of 6% per annum, which is quite staggering. This year we're supposed to uh, have a, some moderation, but over the last 10 years it's been staggering, the average annualised growth rate. We are di very different. We're, we're our, 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 we are the most trade-dependent economy in the world. The total value of trade that... Uh, uh, is, is produced from Singapore from a domestic and an international value-added perspective is 210% of our GDP. So that means our trade-related sectors account for half of our gross domestic product, which means 
We're a small economy, but we're a very small, very open, very trade-dependent economy. So we have a number of trade, manufacturing, industrial related businesses that supplement our financial sector. And most of these businesses are listed on the exchange. And therefore, we have a number of different diverse stocks that investors can invest in over a period of time. And, and many of these sectors will be moving much like the GDP. Many sectors will have some long-term return, but in the short term, that short-term trade dependency means we have a, quite a lot of short-term cyclicality in the market, which lends to cyclicality in the actual stock market sectors, which I'll show you in the next slide. But most importantly, over the long period of time, we have this 6% growth in GDP. If you could invest in this GDP, would you? That's the question. Well, there are the two asset classes we've been talking about tonight. Stocks, represented by the Straits Times Index, the 30 top blue chip stocks of Singapore. The average annualised return of the Straits Times Index over the same period of time was 6.2% per annum. With a dividend distribution of 3.2% per year, your total return of the Straits Times Index amounted to 9.3, 9.4% over the 10 years. Your Urban Redevelopment Authority Property Price Index for residential properties was also up 6% per annum over an average annualised rate over, over that time frame. So you have these two, two core assets that have long-term growth rates of around 6%. Difference is the stocks are a lot more flexible. You don't have as stringent e entry requirements to invest in stocks. And most of us own property as well. Singapore, as a country, has the highest household ownership rates in, in, in the world. 89% of Singaporeans actually own their own home, mostly from the success of the HDB program. So on that, so on, on that, on that note, we are very much invested in property. If you wish to diversify and add to your, uh, to your portfolio and your wealth, there are markets. There are markets on the Singapore Stock Exchange that cover a wide range of businesses. Of the 700 stocks that are listed on the SGX, there are 150 different fields of businesses represented over these 150 stocks. And all of these sectors move differently. This year, real estate developing, uh, developers have actually outperformed the market strongly. The, the return of that sector has been over 30% in the year to date. Your, your REITs, real estate investment trusts, led by office REITs. It was actually, uh, Eman had all the uh, REITs up there. I think the, the leading REIT in the year to date has been Fraser's Commercial Trust, a office REIT, office space REIT, which has returned more than 50% on a total return basis in the year to date. So these these REITs are also diversified in their own in their own in their own regard. You, as you saw, I mentioned the hospitality REITs. There's there's office REITs, industrial REITs, residential REITs, retail REITs. A number of uh, diverse companies within that sector. And we have telecommunications as well, which is uh, a sector that I'd also point out because look, in 2011, when the Straits Times Index was actually down 17% in the uh, in the calendar year your telecommunications sector was up 5%, a more diverse, a more defensive sector that performed differently from the overall market. We are very diverse. We probably are one of the world's most diverse marketplaces in the world. You look at the top 10 stocks by turnover on a day-to-day -day basis, at least five to six different sectors are represented in those top five, five uh, in those top 10 stocks. You look at the Straits Times Index, the diversification of revenue for those 30 components of the Straits Times Index. 40% of the revenue of those 30 companies is derived from Singapore. Just 40%. There's 17 different subsectors represented in the 30 stocks of the Straits Times Index. So just looking at the top 30 stocks on a whole, you know you have a very diversified marketplace. You can take this diversification with stocks, you can incorporate exchange traded funds, real estate investment trusts, there are a number of security products that you're able to articulate an appetite for diversification in your investing if you wish to do so. Here's an example, just one example of how you might have had a diversified portfolio in the 12 months 
ending, uh, ending in July 2011. You might have elected to invest in an exchange traded fund on the Straits Times Index, basically giving you the equivalent price performance of the Straits Times Index into this fund, which is managed by an ETF provider. If you split your $20,000 investment over 12 months, you would have actually made a loss on the Straits Times Index by uh, 2% over the 12 months ending in, uh, in, the, in the end of July 2012. However, if you diversified and looked for stocks that are historically having less volatility coinciding with the volatility of the Straits Times Index, that is stocks that are less volatile than the overall STI and the stocks that are right on the uh, less, volatility, less volatile scale of those 30 stocks. In that 12 months, they were Starhub, SIA Engineering, Singapore Press Holdings. The return of those companies over the 12 months, as you can see, Starhub, total return up 43%, SIA Engineering up 5%, SPH up 10%, brought your overall total return of that $20,000 portfolio to 8.2%. Well, take a more recent example. Let's say the year 2012. Let's pick three stocks. Let's pick Wilmar. Let's pick DBS and Singtel, these three companies. Wilmar, so you, that's 1,000 stocks in each at the end of last year. We, we, that's how many we buy. We buy 1,000 stocks of Wilmar. That's, uh, up to last week, returned negative 35%. Singtel has returned about 11%, 10.5, 10 10.8% total return. DBS has returned around 32%. So picking these three stocks, the biggest stock of the financial sector, the biggest stock of the telecommunications sector, the biggest stock of the consumer goods sector, has actually returned around 10% in the year to date. Of that initial investment, which would cost slightly less than $20,000 at the end of December, you would have received approximately $680 thereabouts in dividend distributions by holding those three stocks. So diversification, diversifying stocks that perform differently over a long period of time can, can obviously help to diversify not just the potential return, but the risk associated with each of these stocks. And as we said, there are a number of products, real estate investment trusts, a number of sectors that we have that uh, can help you to build that diversified approach into your investment decisions. So we have a number of uh, market updates and uh, investor insights that we're able to give you and deliver on a consistent basis in terms of educational notes on the different sectors, the different products that trade on the, on the SGX. You can think of some of the material that we put on my gateway as investor guides or application or relevance guides to some of these uh, some of these markets and we do stay balanced and we do point out there are risks associated of course with all these markets and you have to be able to tolerate this market market risk before you do invest richard had some fantastic slides up earlier discussing how much of your money should you invest overall? How much of your savings should be dedicated? That depends on your own individual risk profile, your own personality for risk. How much, once you do decide how much you're going to invest, how much are you going to invest on one particular stock? Where will you be exiting the market? Should the market or the sector that you've chosen for the long period of time not perform as, 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 as you've uh, anticipated? What are your investment objectives on the upside? Having a well-written, articulated investment plan can obviously help that process, but it all starts with asking the questions to yourself. Why do you want to be investing? How, how well do you know yourself in the investing world? It all pretty much starts with that page 150 in, the, in, this, in this book. So we have this Gateway website. I think the major highlight of the website, and I, I, I don't want to take too much longer, is the StockWiz competition, which kicks off on the 10th of September. This is a, uh, a very exciting competition because the platform is fantastic. Uh, there's, there's, there's a number of, uh, that the, this company has built for us a number of functionalities and features with real-time prices that enable you to sort through 
the bigger companies, the top 179 companies of the uh, of the stock market that make up all those sectors that we had on the on the on the slide before. And that great technical analysis uh, tools and and fundamental ratios that you're able to filter through and sort through. It's pretty exciting. You, uh, you this competition will kick off in 11 days on the 10th of September. And if you do subscribe before the 10th of September and, and, and register, you will also qualify for 2,000 extra bonus points. I think the starting pool for each investor account is $100,000. And we're trying to, I guess, provide a platform that's conducive for investors to learn a new approach to investing, possibly diversifying, trying some of the new sectors or stocks or real estate investment trusts or ETFs that they might not have invested before, kind of like a paper trading venue, which is going to be a live paper trading real-time venue where you can learn in, a, in an environment without risking your hard-earned money just yet. And we're going to be uh, drawing, I think, up to a total of $150,000 in a prize pool, which consists of a number of sort of commission rebates, prizes uh, that are sponsored by, by our, of course, our, our broker providers and our friends, ETF providers that uh, recognise different sort of different sort of attributes of an investor, uh, different sort of more diversified approach, less risk investing, not just uh, overall returns, but obviously some prizes are there to recognise good investing decisions as well. So I do encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, to, to pop along to the gut and get, have a look at the My Gateway website and, uh, and do register for this competition because uh, it should be a lot of fun. And I think so far we've got uh, about six and a half thousand people registered registered for the program. But I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much.